Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, first on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of the great county of Nyamira, I want to send a message of quick recovery to the Secretary of President uh, Rigabi, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Mr. Speaker, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, that there is a season for everything. There is a season to be born politically and a season to die politically. That's biblical. The Speaker, I've, I've agonized. Mr. Speaker, I've gone through a lot of... Mr. Speaker, as I listened to the evidence that was tendered, against... But, but as, as I listened, Mr. Speaker... Honorable, just pause the time for Senator Mogheni. Let us allow Senator Mogheni to be heard in total silence. Please. As a, as a lawyer and a person who witnessed the birth of the 2010 Constitution, Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe, Mr. Speaker, that Kenya belongs to all the 42 plus tribes, Mr. Speaker. And what has disturbed me, Mr. Speaker, for the two days I've sat here, Mr. Speaker, what would happen to my community in Kisi and in Yamira if we ran our government? through this theory of shareholding. Mr. Speaker, as I speak tonight, Mr. Speaker, the people of the two counties of Omogusi, Nyamira and Kisi, are victims of that theory of shareholding. That community, Mr. Speaker, called Omogusi, has got no even a single PS serving in government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we, we speak, this evening, Mr. Speaker, the Omogusi people, Mr. Speaker, have been the biggest victims of this theory of shareholding. Mr. Speaker, the Constitution that we enacted in 2010, in Article 27, Mr. Speaker, clearly states that we should not discriminate, Mr. Speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, when I cast my vote tonight, I'll be sending a message from the people of Nyamira, Mr. Speaker, that a government is formed for all the tribes in the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. I've organized, Mr. Speaker, on the issues that have been brought in this motion, touching on the widow and the children of the late Governor Fonyeri, Gashagwa. And, Mr. Speaker, I wondered if adverse statements and inferences have been made touching on the conduct of the deputy president against the widow of the former governor and the children of the late governor, the nephews of the deputy president. Why, Mr. Speaker, I ask as a father, why, Mr. Speaker, did the widow and the children of the late governor Gashagwa swear an affidavit to dispel all the things that have been said against a scheme of swindling those children. Why, Mr. Speaker? Why didn't they swear an affidavit, Mr. Speaker? That has, that has troubled me a lot. And I, as I cast my vote tonight, Mr. Speaker, I'll be casting my vote for those children who lost their mother, who lost their father, but who were not given an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to appear before this house and tell us, Mr. Speaker, that there has not been any wrongdoing from the David President to those children. Count number one, count number eight, is about the utterances that were made by the David Speaker. I hope, Mr. Speaker, that the person who will occupy that coveted position of David President will reflect on what John says in Chapter 3, verse 5. Mr. Speaker, the Bible says that the tongue is a small part of the body, but the tongue is also fire, and it's a world of evil among parts of the body. If the deputy president has check, had checked his utterances, Mr. Speaker, perhaps we will not be having this motion this evening. So, as we vote tonight, Mr. Speaker, 
let's also learn let's also learn from what the tongue has done to Honorable Gashawa. I will vote Mr. Speaker where I'm convinced that allegations against the Deputy President have been proved. I reserve my vote to be cast at the right time. Senator Bonia.